Most of the information about the universe is obtained due to light emitted from astrophysical sources. In this sense, scientists normally gather information simply by looking into the depths of space. An epical discovery made in 2015, however, allowed us not only to see, but in some sense also to hear the cosmos. This might sound strange, so let's dive right into it. In 1915, Albert Einstein, who was already a friend of ours from the last episode, brought forward his masterpiece, the theory of gravity. According to this theory, massive objects curve the space around them. Yes, actually, even we ourselves affect the empty space surrounding us a little bit. It is already a common wisdom among physicists since Einstein that two massive objects, such as two black holes, when moving around each other, would create tiny ripples on space. These are the famous gravitational waves. Similarly to how sound waves travel out of your speakers by vibrating the air through which they propagate, the gravitational waves propagate by vibrating the space itself. So what was this epical discovery made in 2015? It was on the 14th of September when the LIGO scientific collaboration, for the first time in history, directly recorded gravitational waves produced by two black holes. The field of astrophysics has been transforming rapidly since this discovery. Many new findings on gravitational waves appear practically every day. We will explain some of them in our future episodes, so subscribe to our channel to not miss out. Gravitational waves produced by black holes encode valuable information about these individual black holes. For example, it is possible to deduce their masses by analyzing the gravitational wave signal coming from them. So far, more than 10 such events have been detected, and the number is growing. One of the recent findings, described in this paper, brought a mixture of surprise and excitement. The source of the surprise is the mass of one of the black holes, which is around 85 times the mass of the Sun. What exactly is so surprising about this number? To answer this question, we need to remind ourselves how black holes are formed. You might remember from our first episode that the most conventional black hole formation scenario is the collapse of a star. As stars burn out nuclear fuel at their cores, a gas of highly energetic photons is produced. The pressure of this gas counteracts the gravitational attraction of the star, preventing it from imploding. But at some point the star would run out of its nuclear fuel, the self-gravity would win, and the star would collapse into a black hole. More massive stars have larger self-gravity, which can be counteracted only if the core temperature is high enough. For a sufficiently massive star, the core temperature would be so high that a very interesting phenomenon would occur. Look, higher temperature means higher energies for photons in the stellar core. It is known from particle physics that very energetic photons are able to extract pairs of particles, such as electrons and positrons, from, well, nothing, simply from vacuum. This remarkable mechanism, known as pair production, takes place also at the cores of sufficiently massive stars, where photon energies are high enough. Compared to the gas purely consisting of photons, the gas of the newly created electron-positron pairs has a lower pressure, thus reducing the total pressure in the stellar core. So, as a consequence of pair production, the total pressure support against gravity is diminished. The star then shrinks rapidly under its own gravity, leading to even more intensive nuclear reactions inside its core. As the volume of the star reduces, the pressure increases significantly. The dramatic outcome of this entire process is that the star explodes without leaving a black hole as a remnant. Astrophysicists have given a name to this violent process, a para-instability supernova. Do you get the point? Black holes with certain high masses are simply ruled out according to our modern understanding of stellar lifespan. But one of the recently found black holes, the one with 85 solar masses, is precisely in this forbidden range. The short description of the pair instability process that we gave is only a rough representation of a complicated analysis, and a complicated scientific analysis is always based on many assumptions. This staggering discovery of a forbidden black hole has triggered researchers to re-examine all the underlying assumptions very carefully in order to understand how in the universe such a black hole could have been born. 